In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Chapters 11, verses 3 to 7, verses 17, verses 20 to 27, and verses 33 to 45. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise, Martha said. I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus picked up the game, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Matter, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, on this fifth Sunday of Lent, it is important as we reflect on the theme, Jesus, the Lord of life and death. All the three readings of today speaks about death, life and resurrection. In the first reading, which concludes the famous vision of the dry bones, brought back to life by God's Spirit, through prophet Ezekiel, God told his people that though they were dead by their slavery, he would bring them back to life. This prophecy was made when the people were languishing in a foreign land. So the exile of the people to Babylon is described in terms of death. Grave is a symbol of death. One who is buried in the grave is a forgotten one. Some people are alive, but they are already forgotten like the Israelites in Israel. Therefore. The life God speaks of is not the life of the body, but of the Spirit of God. The life of the body is short, but the life of the Spirit, being united with God, is everlasting and blissful. So the idea of the resurrection here is used as a metaphor. The prophecy is not directly connected, concerned with life after death, but with salvation of God's people from exile. 
This is still the truth which with us today, especially with this dreaded COVID-19 pandemic that has paralyzed almost everything all over the world. What shall we say? Is it about the pain of not attending Mass? Churches are closed. Nevertheless, our priests are celebrated Masses daily for our intentions. Now it is time to turn our homes into domestic churches and parents to become the catechists and pastors of their children. Let us be rest assured that our dead bones shall rise again. Our land will surely be restored back to health and life. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us that we can enjoy this everlasting life if we do things that are pleasing to God and shun on spiritual things. So we are called to do the will of God so that we can be worthy of his salvation. In the gospel passage, we hear about Martha and Mary and their sorrow over the death of their brother Lazarus. The event of the death of Lazarus shows both the humanity and the divinity of Jesus. The humanity of Jesus was evident when he wept at the tomb of Lazarus. This reminds us that Jesus was human just as we are. He became one of us by sharing our humanity with us. It showed that he understands how we feel in this same situation. Christ really understands what it is like to be human. This should really inspire us and give us hope. When Lazarus felt sick, a message was sent to Jesus, but he didn't come immediately. Christ's delay must have been heartbreaking for Mary and Martha, since his presence could have prevented Lazarus' death. The delay in Christ's coming shows that Christ can never come late in any situation. Sometimes too, when something bad happens to us, we feel abandoned by God. We have the feeling that God does not bother or concern about us. Whenever we are in pain. But today's gospel passage shows us that Jesus really understands what it is like to become human. Like the case of Mary and Martha, Christ doesn't leave us alone in our sorrow. He shares our sorrow and gives us hope. No situation is beyond Him. Like Martha, sometimes we think that He has come late over our situations. But Christ is never a latecomer. He makes everything beautiful in his own time, as we can see recorded in Ecclesiastes, chapters number 3, verse 11. All we need doing is to have faith and trust in him. It is never too late for God to care and heal you and me, even when we think we are beyond repair, when people write us off, when we already give up ourselves. The good news is that the God who created us can recreate us. All we need to do is to surrender to him like clay in the hands and see how he will remold us and refashion us. We hear the reproach of Mary and Martha to Jesus today for not being present. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would never have died. This echoes the anger, bitterness, resentment which many of us feel against others, perhaps even against God whenever we are in pain. God's own ways are not our ways. When certain things happen to us individually or as a family or community which we do not understand or expect, we can only turn and leave that very thing in the hands of God, trusting that He knows more and is able to save. That was the case with the death of Lazarus. Why did Jesus delay? Why did he not come immediately to prevent Lazarus from dying? Why did he allow him to die before coming to raise him? These are the ways and thoughts of men, but the way of God is different. By letting Lazarus die, Jesus is telling us that he has not come to prevent physical death. His tax is not to break up the natural cause and part of life of man. This life has an end. It cannot last forever. Jesus has not come to make this life eternal, but to give us another life that will have no end. I have come so that they may have life and have it abundantly, as we have in John's Gospel, chapters number 10, verse 10. For real death 
is not physical death but spiritual death. That is eternal damnation. We also see Christ's divinity when he raised Lazarus from the dead. He didn't just weep at Lazarus' death, but he did far more than that. He raised him back to life. By raising Lazarus to life, Jesus shows that he has power over life and death. He declares that he is the resurrection and life. Jesus is the only voice that wakes the dead. He is the only one that can help us in a, in a way no human can. The only thing the world can offer us is sympathy. Only Jesus has the solution to our problems. He can raise us to new life as he raised Lazarus. He is the source of supernatural life. Those who believe in him, though they may be dead physically, nevertheless, they live spiritually. This is God's promise to us in today's first reading. Lastly, as we gradually come to the end of this grace-filled season of Lent, let us search and find out how we have grown in the life of Christ. Just as Jesus called loudly to Lazarus, Come out! We are also called upon to come out into the light of God's truth and love. Jesus is calling us today to come out of the grave of sin. Jesus wants to raise us too from the dead. We do not have to be dead physically to be in the need of being raised up. We are dead when we are cut away from Christ. We are dead in our sins. When Jesus came to Lazarus' grave, he gave a command that the stone at the entrance of the grave should be removed. We too should be ready to remove whatever that has locked us up in the grave of sin. May the good Lord show us his mercy and may he heal our land of this dreaded COVID-19 pandemic. May he protect us from any untimely death and most especially may he save us from eternal death. Amen. Righteous Father, we thank you. We glorify you. As we look up to you on this wonderful day, we ask you to heal us. We ask you to restore us. We ask you to give us the divine enablement that will make us much better. May your Holy Spirit fill us on this day and forever with the grace that we need to overcome our challenges and our troubles. We we'll make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.